My name is Ramanan Lakshmi Narayan. I'm Director and Senior Fellow at the Center for Disease Dynamics, Economics and Policy and a Senior Research Scholar at Princeton University. We've had antibiotics only since 1942 uh, when the first patient was treated with antibiotics. Antibiotics are very special drugs because uh, they kill bacteria, but they kill bacteria in our body uh, without harming any human cells. One of the problems with using antibiotics is of course that in the process of killing uh, the bacteria that are causing disease, uh, the antibiotics also unnecessarily kill a lot of, lot of other bacteria that are not necessarily causing us any harm. Now over time, uh, the bacteria that survive in our body are the ones that know how to be resistant to antibiotics. And this has always been known, this was predicted by Alexander Fleming who discovered penicillin. And today, a large proportion of the bacteria that are in our bodies, that are out in the environment, uh, no longer respond to antibiotics. Now that's a big problem because if we are sick and with a bacterial disease and we need the antibiotic, it doesn't work for us anymore. If you have to have a surgery, surgery involves having your body open uh, for a large period of time and inevitably it will get infected regardless of how you know uh, hygienic uh, or, uh, or free of, uh, of microbes and, and operation theater might be. Now the only way to address that is by having antibiotics and that essentially is why the world is concerned about this problem of antibiotic resistance. Our relationship to bacteria is very much like fish to water. We live in bacteria. They're in the air around us, they're on every single surface. There are more bacterial cells, uh, bacteria in our body than there are human cells. In fact, if you removed all the bacteria from, uh, from your body, you would be about four or five kilos lighter. So the idea of us having a bacteria-free future is not possible because without bacteria, we would die. But the trick is in being able to use antibiotics appropriately so that we are killing only the very, very small proportion of bacteria that cause disease without doing anything to the rest of the bacteria. India, as it happens, uh, was already the world's highest consumer in 2000, and today by far is the world's largest consumer of antibiotics in humans. In fact, consumption in India went up 103% in humans between 2000 and 2015. Penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming in a petri dish where he found that this mold was inhibiting the growth of bacteria. There was no guarantee that if you then ingested penicillin or you know someone injected inside you that it would go and kill the bacteria in your body. That was just a sheer fluke. The chance that that would not have worked was very 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 high. But Fleming was lucky, we were lucky and that's why we have antibiotics. All antibiotics today are derived from the same 15 or 16 compounds. It is very hard to develop a new class of antibiotics. It is possible that we may not find many more classes of antibiotics. The other reasons why we are discovering so many, so few classes of antibiotics is because the cost of getting a drug to market is also much higher right now. Hundreds of millions of dollars, sometimes even a billion dollars to bring a drug to market. And the pharmaceutical companies are not necessarily seeing a financial return from doing so and therefore they don't necessarily bring those drugs to market. Uh, which is why it's important to not take them for granted. They're very special drugs and uh, you know we've had them only for about 70 years and uh, this is probably the most valuable resource that modern medicine has had. Back in the 1950s, uh, some clever scientist in America uh, was working for a lab called Lead Earl. He figured out quite by accident that chickens which were given antibiotics grew much faster than chickens that were not given antibiotics. Now the reason is simply that uh, antibiotics act as a bit of a, uh, you know, they, they give us an advantage when our nutrition is not very good, when our hygiene is not very good, then the antibiotics are like a boost. But uh, giving antibiotics to every single chicken on the planet, and there are billions of chickens on the planet, is a recipe for trouble and that's what we've been doing. You know, there is a lot of research and development happening into new antibiotics, so I'm hopeful that there will be some new drugs, but it will be very expensive, the price point at which we get the new drugs. Uh, we cannot expect new drugs to come out at 10, 20, 50 rupees. These might be thousands of rupees, and that's something, uh, the future, that's what it's going to look like, so that works for us if we are able to pay for it. 
If we are not able to pay for the drug, that's not such good news. Uh, I think our only hope really is in controlling how we use antibiotics, using them appropriately, making sure that we're informed customers.